All right, guys. So I'm headed back from California, and a friend calls, and got a Chevrolet just like mine, but a dealer, and had a dead miss, and a lot of lights come on on the dash, and I get here, and I check it, and I'll show you what I come up with. Um, this is what I'm working with. P207 and it is a cylinder 7 injector circuit A and this right here is another cool tool that I wound up with it's not mine I've got it borrowed but I'm gonna be buying one eventually I'm gonna go ahead and cut the ignition off so we get rid of that dinging and uh, yeah it's Bluetooth plugs in right here and so far it's pretty great it lets you do the manual uh, forced regen and all that stuff, but it also reads the code and it says permanent. Now, whenever, let's see. Now, get in here. Maybe you can hear me a little bit better. If you remember, I did a video not long ago on my truck. I had to replace the number seven injector connector. And that's what I'm thinking it is. That's what we're hoping it is. And I have a spare. So when they told me what was going on, I told them that's what I figured. It just happened all at once. So we, they pulled over and waited on me here and I'm going to see about getting this put on. A lot quicker and faster than the dealership, but I'll try to get a little bit of video of it, but I have the video on mine, which would probably be a little bit better because I was able to take my time a little bit better. I don't know how this one's gonna go, but uh, anyway, I'll get it put on. We'll clear the code and see what happens. I'm gonna use the jack to jack it up because it gives you more clearance between the fender well and the tire. But if you have one of these on your factory jack, I love this one. Take a 13 millimeter 12 point socket. This one's three inch drive. Put it up on there and it fits pretty snug. And I'll take, tap it down until it gets a good bite on it. You do have to knock it back off with a hammer or something like that. But once you put it on, the impact doesn't work that good. You need a drill, put the drill in low gear and an adapter for 3 8 and I'll show you how that works. You don't want to get under the suspension. You want to make sure you're under the frame because if you're under the suspension, if you're under the suspension, you'll pick the whole truck up and that's not what you're wanting to do. You're just wanting to pick the frame of the truck up and leave the tire on the ground. So. You don't want the tire to come off the ground either. So just that should be about good, and if it's not, I'll raise it on up some more. Once I get in there and get the inner fender lining out, I hear the tire about to come off the ground. And that's gonna give us a lot more room from right here to right here to work. So I got my trusty Milwaukee ratchet. And I got a 3 8 to quarter adapter. I have a T15 torch bit. I'm gonna take the inner fender liner out. Always make sure you got it on loosen because I'm real bad about grabbing it. And when you're taking the inner fender liner out, there's these torch bits right here. You wanna get all of these out and make sure there's in hidden places, there's one right here, there's two right, right here. And then there's one right here and supposed to be one right there. Just make sure and look for all the hidden ones that you can find. So now I got all the screws out, we're going to go ahead and remove the inner fender liner. Which is not that big a deal. I'm sure most of you guys have done it before. And I'm just going to drop it to kind of knock some of the dust off of it kind of a tight fit but here's the a-frame right here and you go right up in on the engine and you see this bolt right here we're going to take that out i want to say it's a 10 millimeter if you see this right here that is the connector that's what we're going for right there but we got to get this plastic piece out of the way to get to it and i'm thinking it's just this one bolt 
but there may be another on top but i'll get this one out and i'll wiggle it around and check it and see so i came in and took this 10 millimeter bolt out right here and now you kind of got to lift and wiggle and pull and i already did that and then this plastic cover will come right out and when it comes out this is the number seven connector right here all right and this is where they put it together i was really really hoping that it had came apart right here but it looks like so far it's still intact because it has been changed before it was changed three months ago and that's why i'm hoping it's the connector and not the actual um injector itself but it's saying circuit open so that makes me feel like we're on the right track with the connector i got it all unwrapped i was highly hoping that this one this wire the butt connector had come apart that doesn't look to be the case so that makes me nervous i'm feeling the wires down through here to see if they feel brittle i don't really feel anything feeling brittle but i wanted to show you to get this connector off I'm gonna pull this up and hook it right there on that bolt. And you, there's a tab right here. You push that tab down and get your thumb in, in front of that red connector and slide it back. Just like that. Push this down, slide this back. And then it should come right off. All right, guys. So I got the old connector off. Got it right here. And this one, was just replaced in April and it is now a couple of days to so September, August, the end of August. When I got it off, uh, I just pulled against it a little bit and it pulled off. I'm really hoping that the connector is actually even good, but I did break the lock taking it off. I couldn't get it to release and I kept pushing harder and harder and harder. And finally it just the top part broke off but when it broke off it did go back far enough to get it undone so regardless it is off and uh hope this is it but i got my new one here that i bought for my truck and we're gonna snap it on crimp it on and see what happens here's the wire it's another thing i kind of didn't like The one is stripped off pretty good. The other one is not really stripped off that good. And I don't think it, the, the one that's not stripped off so good pulled right out. I'm hoping that was the issue. But I'm going to crimp these back together and plug it back in and we'll fire it up and see what happens. All right, so I got one that's in there and I stripped off pretty good bit of wire the last one you see it was cut off real short and I was wondering if I broke it but I couldn't see it like that so I feel like it was just cut a little bit short maybe it was maybe it wouldn't we'll find out shortly so I've already got this one crimped in take my lighter melt the shrink wrap and then I'll crimp the other one in do the same I tried to split some of this back a little bit I should have trimmed that tape off but I didn't the more I trim off of it, the more likely they'll be to get away from each other. I think it'll be fine. There's the finished product. I don't know if it's going to do anything for us or not. I'm hoping that the wires was loose inside the connect inside the connectors. If not, I don't know, but let's start it up and see what happens. And the check engine light was on. Reduced engine speed was on. All right. So, and the stability track, traction control, and we're both getting that coolant level low. We're going to have to replace the tanks to get the sensors. I'm going to do the whirly fab and see how that works, but we're going to clear that. No check engine light, no squiggly lines, uh, traction control, stability track, all that's off. All right, I think we're fixed. I don't know what was wrong with that other connector. I didn't really see anything wrong except for the wire did slide out of that one. I'm gonna keep that connector in case I have a mishap on the road. Maybe it can get me out of a jam until I can get a new one. But I also, if you look, I left those wires way too long. And I can't really do anything about it now because I just kind of messed that up. So 
Um, I'm going to try to tape them up and get them as good as they can. But if you see this right here, that's the exhaust. And that exhaust gets super, super hot. All this. I think that's, that's the firewall. And then right here is the exhaust. So you don't want these by any means touching that. And they're already touching the firewall. So I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that. So when you're cutting your wires, don't cut them too long. But if you cut them too short, they'll be a pain in the butt to actually deal with. So that's why I cut them as long as I did. I did cut over half off, half the length off, but you know. And this is number seven. If you want number five, it is right beside of it right there. Those are, that will work on five and seven, getting at them right here. And then I have not done one in three and I do not look forward to doing one in three. And I'm not, not personally done any on the other side. There's a fuel line you have to take off and stuff. So I put one zip tie loose, kind of loosely around right here. I made sure these wires were not in the bind. They're taped off right there from the factory. And they come right out one of those. And I just loop, hooped it around. And when I put the cover back on, the cover's going to hold them right down like, like that. Okay, and now I put the plastic cover back on and make sure and get it underneath that lip right there come in from the back and down an angle finesse all of this stuff don't force anything and now one 10 millimeter bolt and it doesn't have to be super tight just make sure it's good and snug and now it's time to put the inner fender back in all right inner fender weld back in time to let her back now So it's been sitting here running for about 10 minutes. I do have the fast idle on so I can hear if it starts missing a little better. No lights. When I tried to get rid of the code, it was showing a permanent code would not let me clear the codes. We tried with two different scan tools. And, uh, but as far as I'm concerned, I think it's okay. I think it's all right. I think that connector had just gotten something going on with it. Like I say the wires did pull out kind of easy, but unless it was just the glue holding them in there. So, but she is running really, really smooth. And I was really nervous that that wasn't gonna be the problem, but apparently, apparently we're hoping it was. And if you need one for your truck, here's the part number, I'll link it in the description. I found these on Amazon and that's where I'm gonna order mine from since I just put mine on their truck. Um, maybe you get everything you need there. And then there's the connector I just took off, which was replaced in March. And it's now uh, the end of August. And so now I think I've earned Mexican. They're gonna have to buy me Mexican. I missed a good steak at uh, T. Joe's in Cheyenne to come on over. But I'm gonna go do that. Uh, if you didn't see my other video, I hope this helps out. I was really kind of up in there. I didn't know if this was gonna fix it or not, but I was hopeful and so far so good. But I uh, um, hope you like the video. Like, share, subscribe. See you in the next video. All right, guys, it is way later that same night and uh... I just talked to them. They're, they made it 250 miles down the road, no issues. And that leads me to believe that it was definitely the connector. And after what I looked over the connector, I didn't see anything wrong with it. The only thing that I can figure that happened to that connector was when they crimped it, it didn't crimp good on that one side because I did grab hold of it and it pulled out. I think the main thing holding that connector was the shrink wrap. And I do believe the wire was in the connector and that's why it lasted the three month, three months. And I don't know if they had a bump. I don't know. It just happened where it, it, it got loose. It wasn't conducting enough current to make the injector fire. That is my personal opinion on it. Maybe right, maybe wrong, but the truck is running smooth. Um, another thing I kind of wanted to throw in there that I probably should have done in the video. If you have a P, 
this is once again the best of my understanding I'm not a tech if you're having a P207 is what that code was so we changed the one on the number seven cylinder if you're having a P204 the number four cylinder P201 the number one cylinder P20 and then that last number would be the cylinder and just for reference um, just like on far as my understanding just like on old school Chevy if you're standing in front of the truck looking at the driver's side driver's side starting in the front will be 2468 and then on the passenger side it'd be 1357 so that's where your cylinders are so if it says if you happen to see you got a number six so you go to the driver's side 246 a third one back and I've not done any of them on the on the actual uh, driver's side so you know when I do I'll put that video out too uh, anyway kind of wanted to give you guys an update tell you what I knew and I hope this helps somebody